Ah, the flickering light of a drive-in movie theater screen. Can anything be more magical? Behind the dance of light, a lot of work goes into putting the moving images up onto the screen. Let's take a peek behind the magician's curtain. The film we watch at drive-ins and cinemas is 35 millimeters in width. A few frames aren't so heavy, but put a few reels together and you're carrying a lot of weight. So let's learn more about these reels from the projectionist of the Shamrock Drive-In in Killarney, Manitoba. The average reel will only hold 20 minutes of film. Whereas your average show may be an hour and a half to two, two, two and a half hours. Mm -hmm. So when the 20 minutes run out, you got to switch over to the next machine. Now, how do you do that now? You got a, one's running out, one's about to start. What's the well, if you notice up here, they get the bales on the reels. Yeah. And there are about two minutes of film left. They'll ring. And that's, that's the indication you go to the next machine, get it ready to go. Strike the arc, get it ready to go. And then at near the end of the film, you get these two cues, little black dots or whatever in the right hand side of the screen. The first one, you start, start your next machine running. When you see the next one, you step on the foot pedal and that switches your light and sound. But it's only on one frame, isn't that right? No, no, there's four or five frames all in. It only happens in less than a second. You, you, gotta, you really got to watch it. Did you have to be bang on? Did it be perfect? Mm, well, it helps, but you, <laughs> you don't have to. I don't think anybody is. <laughs> As we saw, Morley works with two projectors, but some drive-ins have a single projector that takes one big reel that the projectionist creates from the five or six reels the films travel in. This eliminates the need to be bang on and switching from machine to machine. A further advance is a platter in which the film lies on its side. On a platter, the head of the film is always accessible, saving the operator time because he doesn't have to rewind the movie after each show. Okay, that's the mechanics. Let's learn about some of the magic. It's still all mirrors, lights, and well, there's no smoke anymore, but it's all trickery. It's just basically 24 frames, 24 individual still frames running through the projector. The mind plays a trick on you, persistence of vision, and each individual frame, there's a slight difference in motion. The character raises his hand, lowers his hand. It's like animation on a large, large live action scale. And the mind plays a trick on you. You begin to see not the breaks, but you begin to see the movement. You begin to see a flow. And that's the, that's the big trick. So what's the next advance in large audience projection? I'm not sure what the future holds for drive-in theater projection or indoor theater projection for that matter. No one's an expert. Everything's changing right now. Everyone wants to go digital, but there's so many different formats. There's the problems with delivery. It's, it's uncertain right now. What makes a good projectionist? I think the big, the big thing is to like, like doing it. And it, if you take pride in it, you, you uh, try, try to get better. <laughs> okay, guys, thanks for your time and for sharing a few of your secrets. But it looks like the show's over, and from what I know, you're the last ones to leave. So, good night. Safe drive home. Mm -hmm.